you have that, if you're living a month ahead, then you're dealing with always with a known amount. So a realtor doesn't sell a house, they're dealing with zero. But if they sell five houses, they're dealing with whatever, you know, 10 grand. And so maybe they say, okay, well, I might have a zero month next month. And so they deal with that $10,000 differently. But it's a known amount. To, to, to forecast what you earn, you will all, wait, John, I'm gonna ask you a question. Yes. Because you do financial analysis and all that stuff for a big company. How, I mean, as far as estimates go and forecasts go, you ever been like just dead on, right? It doesn't, it doesn't happen. It doesn't, it's, impo it's literally impossible. No. And the same thing will happen with people on variable incomes. You'll forecast, to, and you'll have all this history to look at and complex models maybe to spit out these numbers, but you'll just be thinking, oh, well maybe we'll make about this much. You will be wrong, promise. I'll, I'll bet you every time, and, and I will win every time. So with this variable income, you always just, when you're a month ahead, you can just look back and say, here's what we have. It's $1,000, what has to be taken care of? Or here's what we have, it's 15,000. Instead of blowing that, you can kind of say, okay, what needs to happen with this money? What's coming in the future? And start planning that way. So who's on very, who's, who has kind of fluctuating income here? I do, who else? So there's several, several people. So that, that's a great way of handling that up and down, is just to be able to say, okay, that's what we're dealing with. Now we can make real decisions with a real hard number. Does that make, make sense? So to get to rule one, it's just a sprint. You just gotta save money, set it aside, set it aside, set it aside. And then at the beginning of some month, you'll look at that money and you'll say, hey, if we kind of scrimp this month and just really go bare bones and just live on this money, we won't have to touch any of our paychecks. Once you break that, you're always in the new cycle. Okay? And that, that is kind of the, the, I don't know, what you should work toward, kind of like the crowning thing there. When I first decided to sell this, my big fear was, I'm gonna say, oh, just live a month ahead of your paycheck, and 80% of people live right to their, you know, just right on the paycheck. They have like a month before disaster would happen. And I was afraid that people would just see this, see this software and say, well, I can't do that. But I, I was luckily wrong, because people saw it, they were motivated by it, and now when they come back and tell me, they say it's the best thing they ever did. Just, it's tough, but it's completely worth it to be able to get out of that paycheck to paycheck cycle and get ahead. And that was my timer. So, let me, uh, I have handouts for everyone as far as like kind of what we talked about. We can hand those out. And then action steps for each one. But if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to fill those. We didn't talk about a lot of stuff, but that was kind of a, that was like 35 minutes what we normally do in an hour and 20 or so. So we'll see here. Don't everybody speak at once. <laughs> Please, please mm -hmm. don't. So, just do you find it's better to break your expenses down on like a weekly basis, or keep things grouped as a month, or? Mm -hmm. uh, I think if you're following rule one, you can just kind of do it as a month because you've got that money. Before you're following that rule, I would do it with like a, a pay period, you know. Just anytime there's a chunk of money that's coming in that involves decision making, maybe talking it over. Just, just do it on that. Just do it on that. So you have that month saved up? Yeah. It just, to do it more frequently is kind of, I mean, we have a hard time doing it. We don't have a hard time, but it's not, it just doesn't fall in your lap to do it once a month. you got to kind of sit down. So to do it twice a, a month or weekly, I think you're asking for yeah. just missing. We attempted budgeting uh, on a couple different occasions. We actually do pretty well now, but... Uh, where we were doing a, a block at a time for the month, but if it, you'd go over in food, and then by the end of the month, you're not eating. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. Right now, I get paid weekly, so it's like really easy to, to do that. So yeah. Not everybody does that. That's if that works, if that works, just use it. The, the key is that anytime large chunks of money come in, you're making decisions. You're kind of proactive about what will you do with it, not just knee-jerk reaction. Clark. So, with all the different categories that you spoke of, are you? With your, obviously, I assume you use your own software. Are you keeping every single receipt that you you spend and then entering it into your database or whatever, and then at the end of the month it spits out the magic number? Yeah, it's um, I I don't keep receipts very often. I'll usually just import the transactions from the bank. Julie keeps them, um, and once, every, I mean, we don't do it very often. Maybe twice a month, we enter transactions. There's a secret. I mean. 
it's not like you have to sit down every night. When you're first getting into the habit, you probably should just to make sure it's a habit. Or else all you guys would be like, oh, I've started budgeting. And then you're like, the first time I'm going to do this in 30 days. And we'll see <laughs> success rate is that. You know? So it's got to be something pretty frequent as you begin. But we've been doing it long enough where I can't imagine not doing it. And we've, we've, done, we've done it on a monthly basis sometimes where it's just we feel really comfortable with that. Follow up to that. Do you, you, are you working with multiple bank accounts or just one specific like checking account that handles all this and then you just know from the software where the money is and so you need to kind of like internally um, if you were to, If you were to imagine like, uh, like a dresser and all these different drawers are, your, are different accounts but your, the whole unit is like your budget. So you could have you have this dresser that's just brown plain dresser with all these drawers for different accounts, and then you could come along and, and start to paint different colors, and start to 